in Lakota New Year is in April. So I'm going back a thousand years in time right now. So now what's happening is that the star knowledge people, the people who keep the star knowledge, are getting ready to make a journey. And they need to get to a certain mountain in the Black Hills called Hihankaha. They're going to do a ceremony there on spring equinox. They have to be up on top there by that time. And they're going to do a ceremony there where they're going to call back the thunders. They're going to be in tune with nature in the new cycle beginning, the new year coming. There's certain things they do there. Then they have to take a heokha with them. Heokha people are men that dreamt of the lightning and thunder, and it followed a certain protocol in the dream. And so that now they have to be heokha. That means they have to do everything backwards or opposite. They have to speak an opposite. They say the opposite of what they mean. They walk backwards. They dress backwards. Their clothes are inside out. And they're really funny, yeah? <laughs> See, they make you laugh, and laughter is cleansing your body. So this is part of the cleansing work that they do. And they're the ones that talk to the thunders. So they have to take at least one heoka up there, uh, the spring equinox, to this mountain called Hihankaha. It's way in hell up there. And from there, they go to the center of the Black Hills, and I'll talk about that another time. But I'm just telling you, in the ancient world, what was happening at this time. And it's getting ready to start a new cycle, a new yearly cycle. So this is really, really an important thing that's going to happen. And it's going to culminate in summer solstice near a place called Matotipila. And today in America, it's called Devil's Tower. This whole journey is going to end there. It's going to end summer solstice at this Matotipila, or Devil's Tower, as they say in English. But Matotipila, that doesn't mean Devil's Tower. Matotipila is the Lodge of the Bear. Devil's Tower is a name that America gave to it because back in the early 1900s, a lot of people tried to climb up there and they fell and died and all kinds of crazy things like that. It's like the devil trying to fight you from getting up on top, so they call it Devil's Tower. That's a dualistic thing. There is no devil. There is no Satan. There is no God. There is no demons. There is the universe. And we are a part of that. And we play our role by living a healthy life. That's how that happens. Anyway, so just giving you a kind of a rough description here. I'm talking to you from a thousand years ago. And this is what I'm telling you. This is what we're about ready to do. <laughs> we're getting ready to head over to Hihankaha. And we're taking a Heokha, and he's going to call back the thunders now. And we're going to get ready for the new year in April. How about that? Isn't that neat? <laughs> we have our own constellations, and whenever there are certain positions, we mirror that on the Earth. For example, when this certain constellation is moving in a certain direction, and we have to reflect that on the Earth. And this particular constellation is moving to a certain geographical landmark that is also represented in the stars. So when this certain constellation is moving towards that other constellation, that means we have to mirror that, we have to go to that on the Earth. For example, this Hihankaha, this is a, a mountain in the Black Hills. That, As I said, the ceremony is going to be done there on spring equinox. And the way we know when we're supposed to go is when this constellation is moving a certain way. Then we follow that. And then this constellation begins to get close to that Hihankaha constellation. So that means we have to be on Hihankaha on the earth. You see what I mean? It's a mirror. What we're doing is we're mirroring the movements of the stars as the way they appear on the earth. There is a sacred reason for this. It's showing the relation that is viewed from the earth towards the rest of the universe. 
So as the Earth is spinning, it appears that the stars are moving a certain direction. And because of the spinning motion of the Earth, we have to take note of this because there's something happening. And so when we mirror that action on the Earth, then we are able to make a contact to that knowledge. So in Lakota star knowledge, we have a a star knowledge map, and it's consisted of two parts, and they mirror each other. They're like reflecting the other one. It's like a mirror. You know how when you stand in front of a mirror, you see a reflection of yourself, and you wink your right eye, and the corresponding eye winks back? <laughs> but on that side, it looks like it's the left eye. Do you see what I mean? It's, it's a reflection. The star maps are like that. And what they do is the constellations that are drawn have locations on the Earth. And when a constellation seems to go on the sun's path, that means we have to reflect this movement on the Earth and that this constellation is represented by a landmark on the Earth. So when that constellation is in the path of the sun, then we have to get to that landmark on the Earth. See, we're reflecting this path, this journey that's happening in the stars. We're reflecting that down here. And when we are there, that landmark, we're able to make a contact. We're able to receive communication that's going to be helpful. It's a very simple process. It's mirroring. When you look at this map and you see all these constellations drawn on the top part and you look at the bottom part and you see a map of the landmarks that are here on the Earth and if you connect those points to each other, you're going to end up with a very interesting geometric shape. And what's happening is it's mirroring the other one. This is really interesting. This is the reason why in Lakota, whatever you do on one side, you do the same thing on the other. So, for example, if you make an artwork and you have a certain geometric figure on one side, the other side has to be a reflection of that. A lot of people who bead, they have no idea that this is what that means. They just bead like this because, well, that's the way it's always been done. But some of the people who make this kind of thing, they have no idea that this is a sacred thing that they're doing. They're making a contact. Now, you might be asking, with who? So I'm going to leave that to your imagination. (laughs) Remember, it's a mirroring aspect. And Lakota Star Knowledge, Spring Equinox, like I said, long time ago, Lakota people would go up to the highest mountain in the Black Hills. Of course, we call the Black Hills Sapa. Sometimes you hear Black Hills known as Paha Sapa too. But I've heard it mostly as Khe Sapa. Anyway, this journey actually started in February, where it's not everybody, okay? It's just certain people. And see, today's Lakota people misunderstand this too. They think that all Indians did this, and this is not true. Only certain people did this. It was mainly Heoka people. Heoka people, they are men that dreamt of the lightning and thunder and in the dream. It followed a certain protocol. And so that now they have to be heoka, that means they have to do everything backwards or opposite. And sometimes it's quite comical what the result is. And they have the thunder being watching over them. And so these heokas are going to be in this ceremony. Mainly it's supposed to be them doing this. There's a certain star constellation. It's a pipe bowl constellation. It represents a pipe bowl. And when this passes through the sun's path in February, that means they're supposed to start gathering their red willow and processing it. That's what they're going to put in their pipes. They do that once a year. And this is not like tobacco. This does not have nicotine in it. 
this doesn't ruin your lungs like tobacco does. Traditionally, we don't use tobacco. So when you have people putting tobacco in their pipes, that's really, really wrong. Because that's not what's supposed to go in there. It's supposed to be this red willow bark. Chonshashan, they call it. And then they're supposed to get ready and start walking towards this highest mountain in the Black Hills called Hihokaha. So these Heokas go up there and they call back the thunders. They're associated with the thunder. So they're the ones who call back the thunders. This is their getting ready for spring. They do that on spring equinox. As like I said, it's just a few people. It's not the whole nation. This is a several months thing that's going to happen here. What's going to happen next is they head into the center of the Black Kilts, and there's a place there called Pesla. That's like a prairie high up in the mountains. There's nothing there. There's just trees all around it. The Black Kilts are all around it. And there's some things that happen there in Lakota Star Knowledge stories that are kind of wicked. And some people don't realize. They think, it, oh, it's a sacred area. Something really good happened there. Well, yes and no. The first thing that happened there was this is where the first humans were brought that came out of the earth. Lakota Star Knowledge says that we evolved from a being called Pte Oyate. They're not buffalo. A lot of people think that Pte Oyate means buffalo nation. No, it doesn't. It's a being that's human in form, but it's not human. The first group came up, and when they came out of this opening, today they call it Wind Cave, when they came out of there, they turned into human. And they were tricked by a man named Iktomi. He brought them into the center of this Pechsla. See, he made a pact with the wolves. He told the wolves that if he brought them a food that's easy to catch and whose blood tastes really good, then they have to be his allies forever. And at that time, the wolves were starving. Their wolf pups were dying. So they thought they better accept this pack because otherwise they're all going to starve. All the baby wolves are going to starve too. So they made this pack. So Iktomi told these wolves to gather in the trees around this Pechla area and wait. At the same time, he's telling the humans, these are the first dead that come on the earth. They turn into humans, as I said. He brings them to that location saying there's going to be a feast. Yeah. <laughs> The humans don't realize they're the feast. Yeah, They don't realize that. So Iktomi brings them to the center. And then the wolves surround the humans and begin a great massacre. So hundreds of thousands of humans were slaughtered there. And when the wolves drank their blood, they went into a frenzy. They just went into a complete all-and-out frenzy. Totally crazy from the taste of the blood and the taste of the human flesh. So the humans realized that they were tricked, so they tried to find that cave, but Iktomi hid it. He put some rocks in front of it, so they couldn't find it. So they looked for other places to hide, and meanwhile, they're being killed, because the wolves are getting faster as they eat more humans. So finally, they find a place to hide, and there's just a few thousand left. Most of them were annihilated by the wolves. When you do something, that leaves the energy there because your act of doing something sends out an energy. That's a communication, by the way. And so in this instance, we have thousands of wolves that were slaughtering thousands of humans. And so this energy of massacre, murder, this energy was really strong in that area. This is why they stayed out of there. This is why Lakota people never camped inside Cheshla. They could have, because it's a really good protection area, yeah, but they never did because of this story that I'm telling you. The energy that was left behind was so disturbing that nobody wanted to camp there. So then, what the wolves did when they went into this frenzy, this energy stayed on their fur. So this is the reason why in Lakota custom, Women and children are not supposed to handle wolf hides because a woman, maybe she conceived, but she don't know it yet. The energy on the wolf fur is really unhealthy for children. It'll make them sick. In some cases, it'll even kill them. So if a pregnant lady touches that, see, it's going to affect her unborn child. 
So it's best to not take a chance and not have any women handle it at all. They don't want to take that chance unless you're an old woman. Your days of childbearing years are over. Then they can handle it. No problem. But it affects children in a really unhealthy way. You see, this is why the wolves are enemies to Lakota people and also to Buffalo. Now, when the Lakota people were in trouble, the rest of the Pte Oyate that were under the earth, they came up to help the Lakota people. And when that second group came up, they turned into Buffalo. Pte Chaka. That's what they're called. The humans are called Ikche Oyate. And Buffalo Nation is Pte Chaka Oyate. And so the buffalo give us everything, our home, our clothes, our food, toys, utensils, everything. And we have an instruction that we're only supposed to take what we need and what we take is for everybody, not just for ourselves. And that we give something back from ourselves. That we maintain the balance, that we apologize whenever we take something. That same procedure is used even in taking plants. You do the same thing. You give something back. You just don't take. You have to give something back. So that's where that custom was started. So that's why we have a very special relationship with the buffalo. So anyway, that's this Pheshla. That's the location where that human slaughter happened by the wolves. That's why you should be careful when you go through that area. That's one of the things that happened. Another thing that happened was thousands of years ago, two Sichonghu Lakota women met these two men that came from the star and they went back with them. And one woman stayed out there and married a guy up there and had kids. The other woman, she married a guy out there too and got pregnant for him, but she didn't want to stay up there. And so, long story short, she made it back to the earth, but she barely made it. When she arrived on the earth, she died. But just before she died, she gave birth to this little baby boy. He lived among the Sichonghu Lakota people. So he's half from another world and half Lakota. <laughs> and remember, there was a lady that stayed out there. Her marriage was really nice. And she had children for that guy out there. So there's Sichonghu Lakota people out there too. It's interesting. <laughs> I really like that. Anyway, when this lady landed, she landed in this Pheshla. That's where she died. And an old man and an old lady, grandparent metalarchs, found the boy and they raised him as their grandson. But they took him out of Pheshla. They raised him out in the prairie. So, those are some pretty dramatic things that happened in that area called Pheshla. Now, their Pheshla they're going to do another ceremony and they're going to call back the animals that went south and those that are sleeping through the winter. They're going to call for them to wake up and things like that. And they're going to call for the plants to come back too. Then from there, they're going to split into two groups. One's going to head towards the Teton Mountains. That's the foothill mountains just before the Rocky Mountains. And the other group is going to go towards what today is known as Devil's Tower. And we call it Matotipila, Lodge of the Bear. So the one that goes to where the Teton Mountains are, they gather lava rocks. And they're going to take them back to Devil's Tower and meet the other group. So this is going to take several months. So they're going to prepare for the next big ceremony on summer solstice. And that's the sun dance. So those lava rocks are for the sweat lodge ceremonies that are going to happen during that time period. So then those guys set up the sun dance grounds, they prepare everything, they get all the sweat lodges assembled because there's going to be thousands of Lakota people coming in from all directions. So it's a whole series of ceremonies that happens. This is called the spring journey. So our new year starts in April. Yeah, Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? <laughs> Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this video. I really, really appreciate it. And if you would like to send a special thanks in support of this channel, look at the bottom of this video where the title is 
And right under that, where it says like, dislike, and share, right in that area, slide it towards the left. And you will see the symbols change. And then you will see a heart shaped button that says thanks on it. If you would like to click on there to send your thanks of support, I would really appreciate it. As I really do enjoy making these videos and speaking with you and spending some time with you. So, again, thank you very much for listening. To learn more about Lakota spirituality, I have written a book called Wichocha Otehike. This book also includes Lakota star knowledge information. All the videos that I make, which are about Lakota spirituality, Lakota star knowledge, and cultural information, are based on this book. This book costs 99 American dollars. This price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. And to learn more about Lakota language, I have written a Lakota language book called Chante Etanha Owoglake, Speaking from the Heart. And all my Lakota language videos are based on this book. This book costs 119 American dollars. This price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. I also teach online and I give spiritual consultations as well. If you are interested in any of my services and products, you can send payment via PayPal to my email address, which is hechaka7 at yahoo.com. That's H E H A K A, the number seven, at yahoo.com. When you send your payment, please include your shipping address and your email address. Ho, oh, Lila Pilamaelo. Thank you very much. In the Lakota way, everything is circular. As a result, we do not have a word for goodbye in the Lakota language. And so instead we say until next time, which in Lakota is Doksha Ake. And I will catch you in the next video.